Hey friends, welcome to another edition of Ask the Pastor. And today there's a scripture that's bubbling up within me today. One of my favorite passages. I want to talk to you about the theme, it's the law. <laughs> it's the law. You know, there are earthly laws that we can all circumvent and get around. And uh, I was a police officer for seven years. And I, I remember stopping a lady one night who rolled through a stop sign and it was Christmas Eve and I approached her car. She didn't know that I was a pastor full time and only part time as a police officer. And I said, ma'am, do you realize you didn't come to a complete stop? And she said, yes, officer, I'm sorry. I was listening to Handel's Messiah on tape. Well, back then it was cassettes. Listen, I said to her, ma'am, if you're not careful, you're gonna be listening to Handel's Messiah in person because you're gonna go be with him. And she got the hint and I wrote her a warning. It was Christmas Eve. But you know, we can get around man's laws. You know, we can excuse things away and roll through that stop sign. They call it the California stop. I don't know why. But there are laws that God has that he set in motion that you and I can't get around. And he has a plan with those laws and, and his word won't return void. So it's important for us today, if we've accepted Christ, if we've decided to be his follower, if we want him to take us to heaven someday, it's important that we allow him to be Lord and leader of our lives and director of our path. And he has laid several laws down that are for our benefit, that you and I need to embrace wholeheartedly, not out of reluctance, not out of fear or frustration, but embrace them wholeheartedly because our God is only good. His very nature is love and goodness, and he wants our absolute best. That's what he has in mind for you and I. This passage of scripture has come alive in my life. It's really been part of a life theme since I was a young teenager. In Galatians 6, beginning with verse 7, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Mm. Whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall reap of the Spirit life everlasting. And then our focus here in verse 9, our main part of that is, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, listen to this, we might, no, we, we could, we take a chance it could happen, no. It says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall, we will, we most definitely will reap. Now, often in our youth meetings years ago or talking to young people, we would hammer the point home. You better obey God or you're going to reap bad consequences kind of like the dangers of smoking or drinking or what have you, not to catalog issues, but simply to say, we would use that almost as a hammer and that's sad. You know, we would tell the kids, don't do this because you're gonna reap the bad. Well, there's truth to that and we have to be careful, but yet there's a positive to this passage. There's a wonderful principle that if we sow the positive, the positive is gonna come back. You know, there's an old saying, you are what you eat. And certainly, friends, we are what we eat spiritually, not just physically. Some of us, if we ate better, we'd lose weight. But some of us, if we ate better spiritually, we'd gain spiritual muscle and strength and we'd stand better. This uh, same principle is echoed again in Psalm 126. Psalm 126, this law of sowing and reaping. And remember, it's the law. This law says in Psalm 126, verse 5, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. While you're watching today, would you repeat that after me right out loud at home? They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Thank God for that today. It's the law of sowing and reaping. In the same way, if I had a baseball here today and I held it up and asked you today, what do you think will happen if I drop this ball, if I let go, what will happen to it? Everybody out there would say, sir, hey Al, hey pastor, 
the ball is going to drop. Hey, my chocolate lab knows that. I'll, I'll hold a ball up, a tennis ball. She loves tennis balls. And I'll say, Phoebe, Phoebe, you want this ball? And she'll just squirm and wag her tail and bark, knowing that when I let go of that ball, it's going somewhere, it's going to drop. That's because there is a law that God designed when he made the earth. There's a law called gravity. There's a law of gravity. And sometimes we forget that just as much as the law of gravity is an absolute principle in the Word of God, so is the law of sowing and reaping. God has designed the law of gravity, and He's designed the law of sowing and reaping. It tells us here in Galatians not to get weary. Don't get discouraged. He'll allow us a season of testing where every fiber of our being has to stand firm in the foundational principle that we know, God, we trust you. We've tithed, we've given, we've served, we've done our best to live right, not out of fear, out of coercion, but because we love you and we want to serve you. So we are going to hold to the law of sowing and reaping. God never allows us to go down that he does not equally bring us up. It's kind of like the balance scale. If you're having a test, Hang in there because at some point it's going to swing and that scale is going to come back. With whatever measure you have sown, God has promised to pour it back into you. Isn't it just like the enemy to challenge us? You've made a big pledge to missions or to Christian television or to your church or some ministry that God spoke to you about supporting and you just made that big pledge, maybe 5,000 or 1,000 or what have you, you gave your absolute best and suddenly there you are, the next day your furnace goes out or your transmission goes on your vehicle or you, you have a bad day and lose some money and the enemy's right on your shoulder whispering and saying, hey, why did you do that? Look what good that got you. You gave to your God and now, look at your transmission bill. Look at your furnace bill. Oh, look at this expense. And it, to, to a believer who's strong, you'll just shake that off and say, devil, it doesn't matter. God's word teaches the law of sowing and reaping. And I am trusting, no matter how tough things look right now, that it is going to come back to me. It says in scripture, to cast our bread on the water and to give, and it will come back to us not many days hence. It's coming back, folks. You can't get anything past our God. He's watching every tear. He is watching every prayer. He's listening. You are his focus no matter how you feel. And everything you've sown, everything you have labored, every prayer you've prayed, every effort you've made for the things of God, out of a sincere heart, a pure heart, God is going to bring that back. Don't you dare get discouraged. Don't you dare give up. Keep doing good. Don't look at those who aren't doing good and who are seemingly doing well because their day is coming. You just keep doing good and know that God teaches us the law of sowing and reaping and it's coming back. And remember, it's the law. God bless you. Keep sowing. You have a great day.